And right now, this is the happiest moment I've ever been in my whole life. I've never had any experience like this. Triggers, still no to blessing. That's it, vibing. That's, That's it. gonna do it. Uh, really, anyone, anyone who wants to just bang on you, man, let's get it on. You need to entertain the fans. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous. Listen to me, we're at it. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Matt and I are starting up as I butchered the fucking opening. <laughs> we have uh, Drikus Duplessis will be joining us today. He's fighting Trevin Giles at 264. This fight I'm looking forward to. This uh, Tai Tuivasa we have joining us fighting Greg Hardy. I mean, that, that's, that's a almost like a hidden. That's like a little Easter egg. Like you, that's like a little hidden gem. I go in a in a, in a stacked card. Yep, that's a great fight. Hardy, uh, he does get tired but he's gone the distance a couple of times so i mean he, he's definitely looked uh better he looked like and he looked the best he's looked until he lost like when he got taken out by uh march and tabora yeah right and but uh but he was looking good up until then up until he got taken out he was like oh my god he's looking good yeah and then all of a sudden like the gas tank just got emptied empty jimmy yeah 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 but he's he, he's at least uh he's he's making an effort it seems like he's not just trying to come in and expecting to knock people out in one round and dana dana is so funny uh we, while we're talking about the heavyweights yeah. uh this interim fight between derek lewis and cyril gone okay um dana's response uh, dana on the criticism of the interim heavyweight fight shut the fuck up <laughs> that's, oh, that's his response that's his response wait, wait that's it that's what Dana. well no there's more to it but that's the headline dana's response shut the fuck up um I don't know what's going on with uh, Francis's management. I, that's weird, man. It's weird. I don't even know. I don't even know the ins and outs of it. I mean, what do we know? We know that the guy's going. Oh, I'll show the text messages, and then I don't. Know, Dana's calling the guy, whatever he's calling him. So yeah, I think Dana was saying the guy's full of it. So hey, man, I don't even know what the argument's about. I'm sure, obviously, it's about the ducats or whatever. But I don't know, man. You know, yeah. who, who knows what the hell's going on? All I know, I know is Francis ain't fighting. No, and his manager said he'd be ready in September. But Jones has taken so long to go up to heavyweight. Um, so I guess Francis would have had, Derek Lewis was the fight, or there was possibly um, a steep a third fight. But I think that um, Derek definitely deserves a shot. So, um, you know, I, I guess that's the fight to make is Cyril Gaon and Lewis. But I kind of wanted to see Francis fight. Hey. Both of those guys. Listen, I'm, I can't listen. Speaking of fights, I can't wait for this weekend. Oh, God. I, I want to know what time, my good friend, should you be, what time should I be uh, headed to your place? What time are we doing the watch party? Well, the I watch party. It's, watch, it's not the watch along. It's a watch, <laughs> watch party along. Watch along party. Wait, no, hold on, Jimmy. No. Jimmy, you're yes. wrong. Okay. I, don't know. I think you're wrong. Listen, all I know is I took that to the, the, the people. They go, look, Jimmy's calling it watch along. It's not the watch. It's the watch. So there might be two. Oh, am I, I, I calling it wrong? Okay. Look, 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 look what it's he said. It's a watch there. party. Great. So what? But listen, first of all, Jimmy, it's always a party when we're together. So it, it is. that's where you probably had it confused. Like you thought Matt's just saying that as it's always a party. Right. But what time? Like, am I going to be there for all the prelims, early prelims? You Look, they're catering it. They're, they, the UFC probably won't be here until then. But wow. We have prelims. We get the early prelims. I mean, um, and, and of course, the main card. I, I was thinking that you were going to come in just uh, for McG McGregor Poirier. Oh, don't uh, but if you want to come a little earlier. Don't uh, say that. There's a truth in every, there's a truth in every joke. No, <laughs> come for the whole show, man. Come, come Whenever you want to come, come. I mean, the main card starts at 10 p.m., but you're obviously going to be here earlier than that. So come whenever you want. We'll eat food. I got a white couch. Um, it's you're gonna. I don't know if you're gonna like my couch, Matt. You're gonna sink into my couch. It's a fucking cloud couch, and you're gonna go go coof, and you're gonna. That's not. That's not good for my back. No yeah, clock. you might not like my couch. Yeah. Uh, listen, before we get, who's coming in first? Adrikus Duplessis. Uh, but I, uh, oh, let's he's get right. to know him. Let's. Get, it's his first time on here. Let's get to know Drikus 
du, uh, du Plessis. Du Plessis, ja. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, hey Drake, how you doing, what's man? What's up, man? What's up? Drek oh, is man, what an honor. What an honor. Uh, the great Jim Norton. You must be a comedy fan. Well, <laughs> no, I, I believe he was referring to the ex-welterweight champion. Hey, well, Drek is... both of you guys, it's... It's awesome. Thanks I can't, we can't wait to get to know you. It's your first time on this program. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is. Uh, I saw the names and I was like, this, this is awesome. Drakus, does the referee, when he, when he gets you ready before he greases you up, before you go in the cage, does he ever make sure that your spikes are not too spiky on top? You got some hair. That could take out a fucking eye. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> any weapon would... you can get, get away with, take it in there. I'll tell you. That looks like that, that could hold up in like a, like a like a windstorm. Look at that. Looks like it doesn't look yeah. that boost. I, that it's gel? a good look, though. Even when I had hair, no, I couldn't a, do that's that. A, that's a wax. That's a wax. Oh, look at that. Oh, you put a little wax in there. Yeah. That's what the kids do. Yeah, that's a good look. Yeah, that's, right. that's what the kids do nowadays. So, hey, man, let, let's get to know you a little bit, buddy. I, I'm really we're excited to see you fight this weekend. I want to know, where did you, where are you coming from? And what was the first discipline you ever uh, learned? So uh, I'm from South Africa. I uh, live there, trained there, uh, born there. I've, my whole life I've been in South Africa. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I've been, yeah, like I said, living there my whole life. And uh, I, my first discipline was judo, actually. as uh, When I was five years old, I started doing judo for five years. I did it until I was 10. Then I wrestled for a little. I did some wrestling. Uh, for two years, but when I was a little kid, I didn't like the wrestling that much because uh, you know the judo is a completely different sport to wrestling, and you know, it was never for me to to uh, get to this career at this point in my life. So it was always just fun after school. I played school sports, played rugby, played uh, did athletics, all that. So I mean, it was just an after school activity. My brothers did, so I was with them, and then I watched some movies about fighting like anybody else, and I just started loving it. And uh, at the age of 14, 15, I started with K1 kickboxing. Well, and, uh, five, five years old into judo, is, is somebody in your family a martial artist? Why so young to start? Well, my grandpa was, but didn't really know him. It's, uh, that's the weird thing. My dad is not uh, into martial arts at all. Nobody in my family, we did judo. Uh, uh, both my brothers, all the brothers, uh, did, uh, were multiple national champions in judo. And I basically just had to go with the training because I was uh, five years old. So uh, might as well join in the training. So it was never competitive for me in terms of this. I want to reach something, but I was good at judo. I was, I was, I was, uh, I was a national champion because I was too young to compete at national champ. But I was, I was a good judo guy. And uh, I mean, that was basically it. There was, there was no forcing me into any of this. There was my parents didn't force me into it. I did it because I loved it. And what was it like growing up in uh, in South Africa? You know, like I I know com comedians that have gone over to Johannesburg and done like a festival there. I've never been. Um, I hear like it's really certain parts are scary and dangerous, and other people say no, it's a great city. Like I've spent. Wh what's it like? Uh, and where was it that you grew up? Listen, uh, South Africa. I'm from uh, the Free State, uh, born in the Free State, and then moved to uh, Gauteng in Hartbeespoort Dam. That's where I'm from, and uh, you know, South Africa. Um, yeah, it has its its ups and downs, and it has its good sides and its bad sides. And uh, it, it, as far as neighborhoods go, there are neighborhoods that are very, very bad, and uh, then there are neighborhoods that are not so bad but still bad. It's uh, and that's crime wise. I mean, it's not a right. the it's a it's it's a beautiful country. It's a, it's awesome to live in. It's a, not really what I would say uh, foreigners would expect. I think uh, you'll be more pleasantly surprised when you get there than you would be surprised in terms of uh, saying this is a rural area. There is rural areas, but South Africa is a, is a great country. And uh, yes, we do have incredible crime rate. It is, and that's not certain areas. That's the whole of Africa, all of South Africa. It's Did you fight a lot serious. as a kid, like in your neighborhood? Was Because a lot of guys in martial arts were, were fighting a lot as, as, as kids, but not for you? I, I did. I did, but it was never, I was in the street rat or anything like that i wasn't a street kid or anything i was a i was a i was a good student i was good in sports uh i i come from a very good family i come from a good background uh, i you know i had a, a wonderful family a mom a dad three brothers and uh, we lived a, a normal life and uh, i grew up uh, i could say in the comfort i grew up very comfortably 
in, in terms of or what a lot of people go through. I had a, a beautiful family, mom and dad still together, brothers and uh, you now a very, very loving family. So there was never a need for me to fight. It was never the, the motivation behind it. I just love fighting more than anything else. That's, hey, talk about it. Well, you're good at it, brother. I mean, 17 bouts, not a single, not, a, not one single bout went the distance. 72 yeah. KOs, eight sub wins, one KO loss and one sub loss. That's wild, man. Yeah, That's it's a uh, crowd pleaser. <laughs> yeah, going out there and, uh, you know, the roar of the crowd apparently gets me going. Well, the boo of the crowd as well, I guess. But, you know, going out there and uh, I believe uh, a lot of people ask me, do I go out there and just look for the finish the whole time? And I, I don't think it is that. I don't think it is that. I think I go out there and I use the tools that my coaches gave me. I use the tools that I, that I, that I train. I don't want to hit pads for eight weeks, two, three hours a day and not go out there and hit a guy. I don't want to train submissions for two, three hours a day and not go out there and try and use a submission and lie on top of a guy. I don't want to train my ground and pound and not use it. I want to use my tools when I get in that case. It's, it's almost like, when do you get a, the chance to throw a full-blown shot at somebody? The only time you get that is in a fight. And every time I go out there, I can use full strength. I can use full power. I can punch with everything I got. Like you only have 15 or 25 minutes to, to, to get that freedom to do it. And every time I go out there, that's what I try and do. Is I use that, that time I have in there to, to try and hit as hard as I can for the first time in, in how long I've been imagining this. Uh, it's hitting a guy as hard as I can. That's amazing. And you're you're fourteen and or fifteen and two. Sorry, and and Trevin is uh, fourteen and two. You guys are really really evenly matched. Yeah. Uh, it's a very evenly matched fight, and he has a really interesting. Li- I mean, you know that he's a he's a, a cop, and he has a very very interesting life outside of the cage too. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a uh, uh, we are basically complete opposites. If you if you can look at it that, even though our records are very similar. Um, our stats is really sim- very similar. I'm a little bit more tall. I'm a bit more lanky. I'm a bit more muscular, but he's a you know, he's obviously a bigger frame guy, and uh, it's a he, he's a family man. Uh, I mean, obviously I've I've seen it. He's a family man. He's a he's a good guy. He's he's a he's an officer. He's a no. I have nothing but respect for him. I've nothing nothing but respect for him. It's uh, he's not my friend. He's not my enemy. He's uh, the guy I'm fighting. We both have the same goal in mind. My goal is to be a UFC champion and be the greatest ever do this. And I'm assuming the same for him. So we're going to go out there and have ourselves an amazing fight. And it's it's nothing personal. It's uh, just business. And, uh, yeah. Your first fight, it went very well in the UFC. How, yeah. how, did, it feel? how did it feel to make that walk? How did it feel to <laughs> finally get there? It is a it's a it's a very interesting story about uh, how my my first fight came about. Uh, there was this time in my career where I I became a, a two a weight division champion in the EFC, and the only fight I've ever lost in the EFC was to Gareth McLellan, who after he beat me the first fight after he beat me, I was 19 years old then, fighting for his title, fighting for his belt. That was my fourth professional fight, fighting for the belt, and uh, also a short notice fight that got me there. And uh, he beat me with by a submission. And after that fight, he was his record was fifteen and two or fifteen and three. Then he went to the UFC. So that was a that was a that was a big one for me. And it was a close fight. It was a good fight. And uh, yeah, that was my loss in the UFC. And then I I became a welterweight. I moved down to one seventy, became welterweight champion. Uh, fought Yanni Pahadi at one eighty five again. Became the, uh, the middleweight champion. And then I got the call from KSW uh, in Europe. And they wanted to offer me the title shot in uh, at the welterweight. And uh, I went out there, first fight, title shot, and uh, got the second round knockout on Roberto Stoldich. And uh, yeah, it was a uh, that was a uh, that was the uh, then I had three belts and it was it was amazing. I felt on top of the world and I was like, now I'm ready. I, I didn't chase the UFC because I knew I had to. I didn't want to be in the UFC by hook or by crook. I wanted to be there because I deserved to be there. And I want to know that I've tasted myself against every single great fighter outside of the UFC before I get into the UFC. I don't want to, you don't want to get it too soon. I don't want to get cut. I want to, right. when I get to the UFC, I want to become champion. That's my route. And uh, 
also beating Soul Ditch, I knew, listen, I'm ready for the big stage now. I'm ready. And I would have signed as a welterweight. That's, that was the plan originally. And, you know, my body just couldn't make it anymore. We, we, we kept the test because I had a massive cut to welterweight. I walk around, my walk around weight is close to 220. Wow. And, uh, yeah. How tall, how tall are you? Uh, 186. Uh, what's, I don't, what, so, what is... so the wire six feet one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm. Uh, I walk around like two fifteen, two twenty when I'm when I'm outside of the flight camp, and uh, and that's in shape. It's not like that. I just go and get fat at all. Right. It's yeah. just I'm a big guy, and um, the welterweight cut was really taxing. And I walk around the same weight I did as a welterweight right now. It's just the cut is just not that long and that big. It, it was it was tough, and then it took a toll on my body. So when I get when I got older because I was younger. Yeah. And uh, we made the call that I'm fighting at middleweight. And I started after the loss because I beat Soldish and then he beat me in the rematch. He beat me. So it was a, and, he, and uh, yeah, he, he caught me with a big punch in the third or fourth round. And then I made the call. I said, listen, this welterweight cut is not working for me. He caught me with a punch that I was supposed to take. I can take, a, I've taken big punches and that punch wasn't the punch that should have knocked me out. Right. And, uh, well, at least, it didn't knock me out clean, but he shouldn't have rocked me with that punch. And uh, I made the move up to middleweight. And uh, especially I started training in the States then. I started training with uh, guys at Henry Hoof, at Sanford. And then I saw, I'm a big, I'm a big middleweight. I can fight at middleweight. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I started uh, fighting at middleweight. And it's the best decision of my life. And uh, well, yeah. Before. I mean, look at Dustin Poirier, for example. Exactly. Now, you know, he got Robert Whitaker. Yeah. And, you know, he took, he took a shot. At least, I mean, you could argue he just takes a shot better at 155. His head 100%. looks bigger. <laughs> His head looks bigger. <laughs> exactly he, that. He used to call him a pea head. He's not really a pea head no more. He's, yeah. You know? His body and his head looks the same size. I, if you if you saw me at welterweight, you'd say, this guy's definitely a pea head. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. When I was at 155, I was nothing but head. I was just a fucking. <laughs> I actually watched one of your fights just in this week. I watched some some reruns at the PR, and I was like, "Wow, right. I see right. you a lot on the Dana White right. looking for a fight with, all the time." My, I'm like, I can't believe that's your weight. <laughs> with my with my record, when you're saying I seen some of the fights, I'm like, "Well, it could have been good. <laughs> could have been a bad fist. I don't. I was. About, I'm not even saying, "Oh, great." If that's St. Pierre, he most likely he'd be like, "Oh, awesome," but. Shit. Yeah, well, I, I mean, that's what it's about, man. It's not winning and losing. It's about putting up the performance, and you always did that. I, this is – I, dude, I, I knew I liked you right off the bat, <laughs> right? And I thought it was the hair, but no. This is great. <laughs> hey, listen, go oh, ahead, sorry. Sorry. No, so you were going to – you guys were going to fight in March, and uh, you, you had a visa issue. Did they hold you up, or did they not want to issue you one, or was it just a delay? Yeah, so basically what happened is the, the COVID situation still in South Africa. I'm really lucky to be here. Uh, our country went into a hard lockdown again uh, two days before I flew out here. And uh, we had to make a lot of things happen because back then we had the UFC, we had even had some of the FBI guys phoning our government saying, listen, this guy needs an appointment now. And it was, it was basically the embassy that didn't have the, it was the timing of the appointment. The embassy was too far backlogged. They weren't giving any visas. There were nobody to, there was nobody to work at the embassy. The whole country was in lockdown and they couldn't, that there wasn't enough time. And I mean, this was eight weeks before the fight that we started applying for the visa. Wow. And the embassy just couldn't make it happen. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't that they denied it. It was just right. the fact that the time, they didn't do it in time. That's why we only knew about a week out. We kept on hoping, kept on hoping, said, they said maybe tomorrow, maybe in a year. We don't know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it just didn't come to light. And I got my visa three days after the fight. Isn't it crazy? Like, I guess the, the, it, everything was closed down for so long. They're just backlogged and they got, they got months and months of, you know, there's just a lot for them to do, I guess. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, okay. Well, that's good. It wasn't denied. This is a delay is a friend of mine's going for a passport. He wants to travel. And uh, he said, it's a 12 week wait. He's a citizen, U.S. citizen. And he wants to, and, and to get your passport updated, it was 12 weeks and that's with the rush. So I guess everybody's kind of yeah. dealing with it. Sucks, Shit, yeah, no, exactly. Sucks. So, but I mean, uh, when that fight got canceled, obviously, and you know, if your fight gets canceled about three weeks out, you're like, oh, it sucks, but it is what it is, and you move on. When you started cutting weight and doing everything a week out from your fight, already started water loading, all that, already packed and ready to go, and your fight gets canceled, it's devastating. It was, yeah, it was, and uh, here we go, and 
when I made the announcement on video of uh, in my country, people are going crazy for this fight. People are, I have a massive support back home. The, the, it's, it's insane. The whole Africa and South Africa especially is going insane. It's, a, it's like the Springboks playing for the Rugby World Cup. It's people are going mad. People are doing events. People are, are going crazy for this fight. And uh, it's, um, you know, not a lot of South Africans have done this. So that's, that's it's really a big privilege for me. And uh, when I've cancelled that fight on a video and then I sent out, I uh, said, listen, everything happens for a reason. Something bigger will come of this. And, here I am, just a few months later. It's the exact same fight, exact same opponent, just on the Conor McGregor Poirier card in Las Vegas. It's a, uh, it's, it's next level. It's uh, not in the apex, in the in T-Mobile Arena, sold right. out crowd. It's, it's exactly what it was in March, just bigger and better. Just bigger, just bigger, because it's a big. I mean, it's card. I mean, and he got another win on his record. He he, he fought. He the, the Liche actually stepped up to the fight, so he got another win. So now he's on a three fight streak, and that's even better for me. Ah, it looks better. And, and you the, fought uh, once in. Oh, sorry, Matt. You fought once in the Apex, right? Did you? Uh, never you fought, did, no, did, I fought at uh, Fight Island my day. Oh, is, okay. So you you no crowd though. Yeah, no crowd. Yeah. This is this is going to be crazy. Yeah. How did that did that throw you at all? Some I've had we've had mixed answers from guys. Some said that th it didn't matter because that's how you train is with no crowd, and, and other guys said that you can feel the energy difference. Yeah, definitely, I could feel the energy difference. Once the fight started, though, it wasn't it wasn't different to me at all. Uh, the only difference was I could hear my corner, right? I could hear my corner clearly, but the crowd. Then I realized, like the crowd, you can hear the crowd in in a, in a fight, but it's just background noise. You don't really hear it. And that was that was cool. The walkout was a little bit strange. Yeah. It's a little bit strange. Yeah. And the weirdest part for me was after the fight. The weirdest part of the whole no crowd was after the fight because I always when I when I win a fight, uh, people don't understand the kind of emotion the fighters go through. You know, this build up, this, this, the, the the raw emotion, and you know, my first fight in the UFC, everything I've ever worked for, uh, getting that knockout, I scream. I just can't help it. I screamed really loud, like I always do. But usually there's a, the crowd noise to damp for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Ralph, when I rewatched that fight, I'm like, wow, I screamed so loud. That You're a fucking lunatic. <laughs> so, I mean, that was the biggest difference. And uh, I, I can't wait to find the crowd, the crowd again. I, it's, it's amazing. I love the crowd. I love the pressure. Uh, for some reason, when the pressure comes on, I, I just do stuff that I, that I didn't even know I, I could do myself. You were saying before how devastating it is when, like, you're sitting there water loading, your camp's already in, and then they had to cancel. A fight. The fight gets canceled right then. What people don't understand, and I hate when I hear, like, oh, man, I'll get paid this amount for 15 minutes of, of work. Dude, it's two months, two and a yeah. half months. You put, it's like you're getting, you didn't get paid for, you did a lot of the job. I mean, you put the hours in. So that's what people don't see. So it's not like, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I feel the like fight, the fight in a way, uh, I always tell people the fight's the easiest day at the job. Oh, whoo. I the totally eight weeks before the, the diet, the training, the making the weight. That's the hard part of the job. The easy part is the fight and going out there with doing what you love. We, we love fighting so much that we go through all that ridiculous pain and not just eight weeks, years and months. And it's, it's a constant work. You can't just train for eight weeks. It's years and years and years. And yeah. even when you're sore and you're tired, injuries, that's the hard part of the job for a maximum of 25 or 15 minutes of, of, of fun. Yeah. That has, that's, that's how you know you really love something. What always felt good when I was leaving for, a, like, when I'm done with the fight camp and I'm going to board the plane to Vegas or whatever, is I know when it's, like, the last day of the Versa Climber, you know, the Versa Climber, yeah. or the last yeah. day of the hills, especially the Versa Climber. Like, I know I don't have yeah. to do it again until after. I go, all right, look, I'm going to go fight in the cage with a badass right now, but... I don't got to go. That's great. I don't got to go near that fucking thing. <laughs> That's a, I, I feel that way about, about the, the, the assault bike. We had that assault bike that we use for, for, for that kind of training as well. And that assault bike and me, we have a very big love hate relationship. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> one of the best things ever for, for me as a fighter. It helped me. I mean, obviously it's great. It's great for everything yeah. uh, MMA related, but man, that thing. And I, we have a love hate oh. relationship. When I'm done with my sessions, with my intervals for, for fight distance on that thing, I'm like, yeah, exactly. enjoy that. Fuck I yeah. owned you. <laughs> Nothing oh, yeah. can't done. <laughs> hey, dude, I got a Versa climber at my school now. I don't touch it. I don't even yeah. look at it. I just walk past it. 
I like, like, I don't, you know, I, people I, use I don't it. need you anymore. <laughs> I, go, Look, I, you, I go, you help me get all this. I don't, know, I don't really talk. Does anybody that. actually like it though? I've never fought in my life and I've done it in the gym and it stinks. I mean, I, I don't, does anybody actually enjoy the Versa climber? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the thing is about all that thing. If you enjoy it, it's probably not the thing your coach is going to make you use. That's exactly. the sad part about all the equipment. Yeah, I guess so. Right. It's not that bad if you just like kind of cruising on it, but when you have yeah. to like do 30 seconds above a certain level or keep it at this Right. RPM and that just sucks, man. You try to get a stride and you look, you just, you know, you look horrible and you're like, yeah, I don't know. You feel like a little bitch. I hate it. I yeah. fucking hate uh, it. Yeah. But, but I'll tell you right now, I I'm very rarely, I, I can count on my, not on my count on my hand, really only like two fights I can remember getting tired in. So the, the thing does work. It's fucking it great. Yeah. You know, how many it minutes does, would you does. do no, that? I'm sorry to interrupt you. How many minutes, Matt? Would you go? Would you go oh. like a, you know, thirty seconds on, thirty off, or oh, so, sometimes? Oh yeah, there's that, or a whole minute, and then there's a minute, that type of thing. But, but it's also I would either do it part of a, of a of a big workout, or even part of it. Like I would do the whole fight on it. I would do the whole fight. Yeah. Interval training. Yeah, that's exactly oh, like do five minutes, have one minute break. Five yeah. minutes, one minute break. Yeah, that's that's, that's tough. Yeah, that's exactly shit. how we use it. When I do it, you hear what? Vut. Vut. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Vut. <laughs> nice, nice and relaxed. That's crazy. Oh, so, you, so they, they'll have you do 15 minutes um, at a decent pace just to make sure you can do it. Yeah, dude. I mean, you, anybody can go on at 15 and just kind of do exactly the pace you were doing. Yeah. Right? yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Ficus, for the people at home, they, we want, they want to get to know you better, okay? Something unrelated to MMA, a hobby, a book, a show you're watching on Netflix – Talk to us. Uh, massive uh, binge watcher. I watch, uh, yeah, I'm a binge watcher because it's a between training. I'll, I just destroy Netflix. I, I'm, yeah. I'm constantly looking for new stuff to watch. I love it. What'd you watch lately? Um, Give me something. Uh, I, I re watched Vikings four times now. Jimmy, Jimmy. I know. That's Jimmy! Matt Schell. That is Matt Show. That's Matt Show. Uh, that is, it's amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely naming my first son Ragnar. How, it's uh, one of the greatest it's, talents it's, ever. Uh, one of the he's, greatest. He's amazing. Talents. He's an amazing athlete. He's not without flaws, but I mean, <laughs> what an amazing, what an, I mean, you know, he yeah. him, rapes and pillages. But listen, but <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm for telling the time, you, Jimmy, for the time he was in, well done. It's my, I'll tell you right now, I'm not even exaggerating. I think it's my, it might be my favorite series ever. I'm, I'm thinking it's better than Game of Thrones. It's really. Uh, yeah, it's 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 right. It's I think that, so that, that's, that's a two for me. Game of Thrones and uh, and uh, Vikings yeah, right up there. Then of course I'm a Banshee fan, a massive Banshee fan. Just, Sheriff oh, Wood. Drakus, we could have been oh, hanging out ages stuff. ago. I just got into Banshee, another one I told oh, you. You are in for such a treat. I've watched it three times as well. Sheriff Wood is going to be Violent. your new hero. He's he's amazing. He's a, he's a, he's a, it's awesome. It's a great great entertaining show. Sheriff. Yeah, they, they yeah Sheriff Hood. It's, yeah, Jimmy, it's great, Jimmy. I, I'm getting back into that because I'm watching that with my wife. Uh, if I yeah. can recommend something, if you like zombies, check out Black Summer. Okay, I'm it's definitely. Great. I'm getting. I like zombies. I'm. I'm. Check I'm that down to that. Out, man. Then, of course, reading. I love reading. I love. Uh, you know, that's a. That's one thing. When uh, I stopped studying, when I finished studies, and like all that part of my life, when I I stopped, uh, and uh, I realized, uh, you know, I have to get smarter the whole time. I don't want to, you know, as a mentally get stuck somewhere. So I'm constantly trying to learn, do uh, courses, do uh, on uh, just, uh, just, I don't even, I don't need the credentials. I just read the courses. I just go through uh, nutrition and, uh, or, uh, you know, physical, uh, the physical body. I, I know stuff because that's the best way for me as an athlete to improve my mental health, to improve my physical health, to make sure I don't get injured to not just listen to a doctor, but to know exactly what he's talking about. So I like to, to educate myself on that. But uh, mental health is a big uh, mental strength. Mental training is something that is pretty new in the sport and not a lot of people utilizes it. I have a mental coach and you know, he's a very good friend of mine. So uh, we, I, I spend a lot of time getting myself mentally ready, reading books on it. I'm reading uh, Extreme Ownership with Jocko Willing right now. Uh, oh. these, these, these are, these are all the books that I, I love to read, uh, Stealing Fire, which is an amazing book about, uh, it's, 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 it's about the hero's journey. These, these kinds of stuff that, that, that's almost like all about peak performance, getting into that flow state that 
all that stuff. I'm very, very intrigued by that. I love it. What'd you say about the hero's journey? Which which one is that? Uh, Stealing Fire is the book's name. I'll, I'll, I'll get your name. Stealing Fire. It's one of it, it's my favorite book. The best book I've ever read. Drikas. Uh, am I saying it right? It is probably pronounced uh, Dr- Drikas. Okay, Drikas. I'm making sure. Uh, we have uh, Tai Tuivasa uh, in the waiting room. So w- thank you for coming on. Trevin Giles, you guys are kicking off the prelims on Saturday night. Uh, good to finally have you on the show. And uh, we'd love to have you back at another time and, 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 and talk more about that other stuff too. It was, it was fun talking to you. Oh, hell yeah. Guys, thank you so much. It was really awesome meeting you. Uh, big fan. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me. And uh, thanks for the opportunity. It's really awesome. Cheers. All right. Uh, uh, Trikas uh, Duplessis, have a great fight. And we'll talk to you again, okay? Talk to you again. Cheers. All right. Nice thanks, to man. meet you, buddy. Oh, that's a fucking shirt. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Look at that shirt. You like that? It's Aboriginal flags. Is it a oh, it's your flag? Yeah, it's a Nadoc week back home. What, oh, no, I what like is it. that? What, what, what week is it? Nadoc week. What does that mean? Uh, it's just a week where we represent our people, our past and present, just represent our mob. Oh, okay. Now, now let me ask you, Ty, with this whole COVID fucking thing going on, are you a little hesitant to drink out of a stinky boot now with that fucking thing? Come he on, don't man. give a, He don't care. He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't give a shit. The vaccine, man. Fuck, I've been trying to tell you this for years. He doesn't, he doesn't care? You don't care. I don't think he gives a shit. Hey, Ty, we're so excited for you. We On this card, you're, this is a huge card, obviously. And yeah, you're big. fighting Greg Hardy, who's got a layer. Listen, he's got a You know, this guy's got a, he's got a name. You know, he's, new, he's, he's fairly new in the sport, but he's got a name. Are you yeah. coming to get all his smoke? How are you feeling now? Man, he's been talking like he wants this smoke, so I'm going to give it to him. I think I fucked that up. I said he wants to get his smoke. Yeah, we always fuck up with this. If the smoke That's smoke. A, I don't know. Smoke, <laughs> shot, shade, shine. I try shine. to sound a little young, Ty. I try to sound young. And <laughs> all right. you, did, you did all right. You did so all listen, right. so Ty, you thinking he wants you, your smoke, right? But he's, that's what he's saying. He's saying like he's wanting to break my face and shit like that. I, I don't know. I don't know where these words are coming from, but uh, hopefully he brings it. You're making me want some smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vape I'm for a second. A I'm not exactly <laughs> Joe Rogan here. I'm not, Bar- I'm not Barbara yeah. Walters. <laughs> now, Ty, you are uh, you have an interesting. You are. I think you are eight zero. And then you drop three, but you've rebounded with two straight wins, which is uh, a great turnaround. What what happened for you after that third fight that changed things for you? Were you, were you in a mentally bad place at one point, or did it? Did were you able to refocus? Yeah, I think I think I just lost myself for a little bit. You know what I mean? And it, and it happens. Sure. Kind of, I kind of come into the UFC. I was made a big name. I was, you know, I was fighting all these big guys. I maybe was rushing it a little bit. You know what I mean? Just getting a little bit ahead of myself. And, uh, you know, just some out of cage stuff, at home stuff, you know what I mean? It just my, I just don't think I was in line with myself. And uh, usually when shit gets like that, you know, I have to step back and try and look at things and look at myself and then go again. And I feel like I'm back on a roll now and, and a good win on uh, on Saturday will, will fucking get me back up there, you know what I mean? Yeah, did, did you do something in particular? Like, what, was, was it a bit of a confidence shake? I mean, you did something to get your confidence back? Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I was born with confidence. I'm not worried about the confidence part of things. Uh, more just uh, in line with myself, making decisions. Uh, like, I was making stupid business decisions, just stuff outside of the cage, which was affecting my training and affecting initially what I do, which is fighting. And, and that's what I do. And that's that's my number one priority. And I kind of had to get back in line with that. You know what I mean? And and I'm back on, I'm back on route, so... You know, I just train and I think about fighting and I'm trying to better myself all around as a professional. So I think that's where I kind of was fucking up a little bit there, you know what I mean? So, but that comes with experience and, and with, with, with age. I'm still probably one of the youngest, in, in the, you know, and I feel I'm going to be around for a little bit. So I'm just getting started. Yeah, bad business decisions. I mean, we all make them. And so you got to get somebody around you that, like, you trust. But then again, like, who do I trust? Like, it's it's tough, but if you, it's very distracting in professional yeah. life if you're thinking about business stuff and money while you're trying to do something uh-huh. professional. Hey, Ty, you watch – now, with Greg Hardy, 
are you letting your your coaches watch the the the, the tape on him, or do you sit down there with him, or or, or no? No, I watch one fight, and then that was, that was about it. Ty doesn't. You can't just tell you about Ty Tuivasa. He does not give a fuck. Look at him. <laughs> I love this about him. You can't watch. And then go in there and they do something totally different. You fucked. You know what I mean? Like exactly, exactly. Hey, you. Something tells me you handle those pre-fight nerves very well. Would I be correct with that, or or do you even? Yeah, get- yeah. I, I I I feel the fight is more. The fight is my time. Like the fight is. I hate training and I like sparring and stuff. And you you like a kind of that for me is more like. You know, if I got a hard session, I get more nervous for that. You know what I mean? Or like, you know, I, I get kind of, I'm weird like that. But then once there's more people and there's cameras and there's lights, it's just like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do this. It's on now. I think we should keep a camera on. <laughs> I feel like you're interesting. I feel I'm in reality. I've been thinking about show... OnlyFans. I've been thinking about OnlyFans or some shit. <laughs> OnlyFans? <laughs> we were thinking about a reality show on A&E. Only fans. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> what, now, what is only is only fans just for something to show your ass, or what is it for? Right, I don't know, but I heard it's like a porno side or something, and I heard them yeah. they make it point. So, oh, okay, I'll, I'll also pretend that I don't know. Judy. It's something you look at naked girls on. <laughs> is that what you do? Oh, actually, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah you pay for it? it. It's actually it's a good site. You uh, people go on and model and do what I do, and there are guys that that, or that do things that are not sexual. Comedians that go on, and you could have nude photos, you could have regular photos, and people pay every month. That's all. It, it's very, very, uh, you know, it's pretty simple and it's very. Popular. What do you reckon my price would be? You know, I guess it depends on what you do. Um, now, to watch you mm. go around your daily life would be very interesting. Um, uh, to watch you naked, you could probably get more money, but I wouldn't sign up for that. But some people definitely would. Um, you know, it's an option. Ten bucks a month, fifteen bucks a month. But if you hey. get a thousand, but if you get a thousand people, that's a lot of money. Oh, true. That is true. But nobody yeah. uses the OnlyFans for like, like tr- to show training footage and shit like that. Like, or no? Yeah, you can. I, I, heard, guess. Uh, I heard Izzy does. Who does? Is he? Does he? Izzy, yeah, I heard Izzy's got like he does his sparring and stuff, and he gets. The, I, I I heard that. I don't know. I, don't, I think it's true. Is it true? I don't know. I haven't heard that, but it, I, I mean, it makes sense. Around. Yeah. I just don't want no perverts slipping into my DMs. I don't need that shit. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't mind what you roll. Around. They want to see me roll around. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be like, ah, can you do it in a? In a tub full of fucking KY. I go, yeah. no. Or a blouse. Could you wear a blouse? Well, you-, <laughs> you, wear, you wear lipstick and roll it. No. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, what I meant before was more what Jimmy was leaning towards. Like a reality show. Because, Ty, oh, yeah. you are a, you got a, a presence about you. I don't know. You make me laugh when you're not even doing anything. You're kind of a funny guy. Like, you got a fucking... Hey. Not listen. Not like I'm not trying to be at a scene at Joe Pesci like... Funny how I'm just saying you are kind of like like affable. I recognize it because I am too. Jimmy, yeah. way off with this. No, you're actually correct. You should just I, have that I energy. Ben? Yeah, Matt's a little stoned, but no. I mean he. <laughs> are you stoned, Matt? I'm telling you, he's a big jovial guy. Yeah, it's good. It's better than having. Listen, if he had the personality of a fucking plant. I'm not saying there should be a fucking reality show on Right. It. I'm saying he's got a, you got a screen presence. I'm, I'm thinking you, fucking Derek Lewis, you guys get an apartment somewhere, put a react, make it like the Truman show. You put a reality show in there. That'll camera. be fun. That'll You're be a cool. god couple. One of you guys is a slim bro. Derek's all neat. Ty's drinking out of fucking boots and shit. This could be great. <laughs> well, sign it up. I'm ready. Sign me up. <laughs> I feel like I'm pitching a meeting to the fucking board and they're just looking at me like, dude, what are you, a fucking asshole? Well, it's... uh you know, smoking, I, Matt. No. <laughs> I, I don't make fun of you and your fucking boots, you dirty bastard. <laughs> dare you. Are you here this weekend? No, I wish, buddy. I wish. Because we haven't done one yet. Oh, what, drinking out of a boot? Yeah. Does somebody have to spin it, though? You can spin in mine. Okay. 
All right. Well, I'll drink out of a boot, but only nice with Ty. I'll do it with Ty, but no, 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 no. It has to be a, a female uh, shoe. Wait, people <laughs> spitting it? People high spitting heel, it? High heel. High heel. Ah. No, no spitting. No spinning. Well, you have to spin it. It makes it that be. It sells the. It sells the vibe a bit more. You know what I mean? You know what? Hey, Ty. Maybe you should switch from that to. Maybe you should start smoking, and not do that. Smoke weed. Yeah. I smoke weed hard. <laughs> 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 Fuck it. Ty. All right. Listen. Back to the fight. I don't yeah. Know. Listen, Greg Hardy. This is big. Because he's, I'll tell you right now, he lost his last one to March and Tambora, but he was looking really good up until that point. Yeah. Yeah. So are we expecting a fucking hard first round and then for him to teeter off? Oh, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to, I'm ready to bang on for 25 minutes. Uh, my main goal is this was to be fit. And I feel I'm, I'm probably, I'm very fit. I can punch and kick for 25 minutes strong. So. Uh, if that's if that's what he wants to do, I, I just feel it's going to be a hard office for him. I'm not going to back out. I'm not going to. I'm not going to pull away. So I'm all in. Oh, it's either me getting knocked out or I'm fucking winning. That's, there's only two options. So you're saying you're? I mean, 25 minutes. This is a three round fight, right? Yeah, of course. Oh, you're ready for five rounds? Okay, I, I understand. No, I'm, ready, I'm ready to punch on for 25 minutes. Okay. Yeah, he's looked. Uh, he's really interesting. I mean, he obviously came off a a good football career, and he seems very dedicated, and he's made a decent amount of adjustments. Um, but you don't watch a lot of tape. You just you, you find that it, it uh, like you said, ex- makes you expect one thing, and they're going to wind up doing another. Uh, it's I, this, I won't take anything away from his sporting achievements. Like he's he's, he's to play in the NFL and the UFC. I think is they're two of the fucking hardest sports in the world. I like to make it to make anywhere those I ain't gonna take that away from him, you know. He's done well to do that, and that's great for him. But to start saying he's gonna break my face and shit like that, I don't I don't know if he knows who he's talking to. Does that make you more motivated? Or like a lot of guys don't aren't oh, affected at all by talk that oh, but shit, that shit, I wanna punch your face and now <laughs> I'm just gonna punch it harder. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it motivates you to wanna punch it harder. Talking. I like that. Yeah. Hey man, well, listen, your confidence has to be yeah. high coming off a fucking TKO and a KO. And, you know, that the, it must, you know, it gives you extra confidence when you're putting people to sleep two fights in a row. Well, all my fights I've, all my fights I've won, I've pretty much right. put someone to sleep. Oh, my, history is, is, my history speaks. I don't know. He's talking about breaking faces and breaking people. Fuck, I haven't seen him break shit. <laughs> I fucking love it. I love it, Jimmy. I can't wait for this weekend. Yeah, I'm. Uh, this is a great fight, and uh, this could be a main event fight uh, on another card. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're obviously you're on a massive card. So uh, before we let you go, Ty, what do you think of uh, you know in, in the division the uh, the interim fight now between Cyril Gone and Derek Lewis with Francis not fighting, which I think is strange uh, that he, he's not fighting right now. What, what do you think of what's going on at the top of the division? Man, I don't know what the fuck's going on with all that. But uh, Cyril Gain, man, he's he's he looks like the he looks like the you know he's 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 a freak of nature. He looked. Are they the same? Are they cousins or do they train together? They train they, before. They train together, yeah. yeah they train together. So yeah, I saw that. I don't, but they look kind of. They're like they kind of look the same and shit. So uh, they're both. But I think Cyril Gain moves a bit a bit more. You know, a bit more. I don't know. The yeah, is a bit more thingy, you know? So he's it's gonna. I don't know, but you never you never count Derek out. That's for sure. My man's a banger. You never count us bangers out. So we're gonna keep banging. So that'll be a good fight. I don't know. I don't. I don't really know. I, I think Cyril Gaines got a hard day in the office with Derek. To be honest, yeah. So, Derek, there's no easy way. Like even no, Curtis no. Blades, just he, Derek just basically can throw that short, that short. I think it was short right. He's a banger. And you, yeah. you can't, and a banger means he's going to fight till it's finished, until he's finished. So, and they're the people you don't really want to fight with. So, they're, <laughs> he's, I, I, and I'm a big fan of Derek Lewis, to yeah. be honest. So, I, I, I like, I like my people. I think he, I think he might beat Cyril again. Ty Tuivasa, uh, good luck on Saturday night against Greg Hardy. We'll definitely talk to you again. And uh, always, always fun to watch you fight. My man. Thank you. All Ty. right. Take, take care, Ty. Take care, brother.
Thanks, man. You can talk about that. Later, See bro. You, Be good, man. I think we just talked Ty Tuivasa into getting an OnlyFans. That's the headline from this episode. Ty Tuivasa is going to get an OnlyFans. I think I'm silly with the reefer. Meanwhile, the guy's drinking snot out of a booth. <laughs> the fuck is going on around here? I don't get it, dude. The I spit. Like him the, somebody's dirty, and I'm a dirty guy, but just drinking something with someone's shoe that they spit in, that's just, oh. Jimmy, meanwhile, you fucking play people's toes like a harmonica. What are you I know. About? That's the beauty of me. There's no consistency. <laughs> There's none. I, I know. I don't have a good answer for you. Shit. All right, man. Let's do a couple of picks before. Uh, Let's do that shit, man. Let's go. Chris uh, Mutinko. I'm uh, oh, sorry. Mutino uh, against uh, Sean O'Malley. Uh, I'm not familiar with Chris, but uh, O'Malley, interesting, had a couple of. He's coming off a, a win after that loss to Cheeto Vera. Had a couple of uh, Marab and a couple of other, uh, I think Ricky Simone. A couple of people threw their names in in the ring, and uh, he chose this guy, who I believe is his first UFC fight. Amali, Amali, first round knockout. You know why? Why? Eh, because I, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna I say O'Malley. I'll, I'll give him. I'll give him second round stoppage. Okay. Second okay. round stoppage, O'Malley. All right. All right. Let's do this now. Okay. What do you I'm, got? I'm, I'm. I like Yana. I think Yana's yeah. tough. She knows how to win a decision. Having said that. Irene looked amazing up until our last fight. And that fight was a little bit ago. When was that? That was yeah. a year ago. Almost our a last fight was October of 20. Yeah, okay. That was a little bit ago. Uh, and she looked gr- amazing up until then. So I think she made the correction. She's coming back strong. But I'll get up for decision. Okay, I'm going to take Kunitskaya decision. Tui Vasa, Greg Hardy. Interesting, interesting fight. <laughs> I'm going to listen. I like Greg Hardy. I think I'm going to go with Tai Tui Vasa, man. I think he's gonna go. I think he's gonna get him knocked out in the second round. You know what, Matt? I'm nutty, man. I'm gonna Ooh. take Tui Vasa decision. Nah, I, mean, I think he's gonna find a home for those fucking New Zealand fists. You might be right. Oh, I'm gonna thunder. take him by decision. Yeah. We're banging through these, Jimmy. Gilbert Burns against our buddy Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy decision. Wonder Boy's a hard guy to. He's you got to. He he's so hard to fight. He's like an enigma. I was like, yeah. Yeah, guys think they're going to take him down, and he is extremely difficult uh, and extremely fast. And the way he bounces, he's very hard to get a read on. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to take uh, uh, Wonder Boy by decision as well. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I give Gilbert Burns a lot of credit though for taking a fight with Wonder Boy after yeah. losing the title fight uh, tomorrow. Yeah. yeah title fight. Um, t- yes. Uh, Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor. Third round, third round stoppage, uh, Conor McGregor. It's funny. I'm taking Conor, too. I'm taking him in the second round. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. Did oh, I say you're taking Conor Poirier. McGregor? Yeah, you're taking Poirier. I'm taking I Conor. said Poirier. What did I just say? You said Conor McGregor, which surprised me. No, no. You know why? Because as I did that, my landlord was calling me, and it threw me off. Who's your landlord, Conor? <laughs> 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 you're funny. But uh, I'm taking uh, Poirier third round stoppage. Okay, I'm going to take McGregor second round, and here's why: I still think his he has that booming lightning fast left. Um, I don't think McGregor has probably had time to make enough adjustments to stop Poirier from doing what he did last time. But I think at the end of the day, this is a bigger fight for Connor than it is for Dustin Poirier. Um, not that he wants really? it more. Yeah, even though Connor's got the, enough money to retire for ten lifetimes. Uh, I think Connor has won. He's lost. He's won. He's lost. And and, and I think uh, this is a huge fight for him. This is a bigger fight. Than I mean, that. He's not doing any media why for this. If, why big of him? Because I think Poirier has looked so good. I think Connor has been more inconsistent lately. Let me look at their records. Hold on one second. Uh, I have to type this in. Yeah, Poirier has been on quite a tear. Um, yeah. He's only lost two fights uh, in, in six years. Whereas Connor has been a bit more inconsistent lately. Um, yeah. He lost his last fight to Poirier in the second uh, with that pretty devastating knockout. Um, he, what the, wow, he's got a long Wikipedia. Um, and before that, of course, he beats Cerrone, loses to Habib, wins two, loses to Diaz. He's been back and forth, and I think he's ranked fifth. And I think for him to, to, to be any type of a title contender, he has to win this fight. And I don't think we've seen Connor in a must-win fight in a while. 
Uh, it's just a, why I'm taking him. It's just my thinking. Yeah, it's it's all it's all fucking great, Jimmy. It's all fucking great. But he's fighting Dustin, a killer, I know. Diamond Poirier. Yes. I mean, do you see what Max Holloway? How he, you know, out, you know, he outboxed uh, the great Calvin Cater. Yes, he did. Amazing. Who just who beat Dan Ige and, and who? I mean, and saying I'm the best boxer in here. I'm the best boxer. That's Max Holloway. And Max Holloway's phenomenal. Yeah. Him and Dustin had a great fight, man. I mean, I mean, I mean, look how Dustin Dustin bested him. So it's like Dustin's confidence is at an all-time high. He just ended Connor. And before he knocked him out, he, he the leg was compromised. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even said. So yep. it's not like he just beat him all, man. He couldn't do it because he couldn't walk anymore. He yeah. got him like a he got him, he took away his movement, took yep. him out, and in the takedown. I feel even though I feel Connor. Has a very more well-rounded game than given given credit for. Yeah, you don't really see. I mean, I mean, I did, he took down some people back in the day, but by the way, every time I've taken Connor, I'm wrong. I'm always wrong when I pick Connor, well, but I'm taking him anyway. Well, listen, I think for the offensive wrestling, you got to give that to uh, to Dustin. Sure, to Dustin probably. I think uh, he works more his defense. As far as that, but but Dustin could mix up the strikes enough to add in. Listen, I got Dustin Poirier third sure. round. That's what I got. I'm sticking with that. Yeah, I like hey, look, it's it's a smart pick. I just think that the the magnitude of this fight for Connor, the fact that he lost to Dustin and wants to be back in there with him immediately, uh, with the kind of money he has, he doesn't need to be fighting. I just think that th this means a lot more to him than than uh, he's probably letting on. So that's I'm I'm just gonna take Connor for that reason. So Jimmy, I watched a new uh, Chris Pratt movie. Most of it, uh, uh, the Tomorrow War. It's on. It's on Amazon Prime. It's fuck. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, oh it's good, Jimmy. Oh man, Jimmy. These aliens aren't the aliens from Independence Day. With such a letdown, when Will Smith welcomed the Earth, boom, he punches that thing in the head. He hated that. That once that happened, I was out of the movie. Yeah, I was out of the fucking way. I wanted to see Independence Day. I wanted to love it. Yeah, me too. Me too. It. Re I remember seeing the scene of the big alien ships coming out from the clouds. And yeah. Went, oh, what if this really happened? Oh my goodness! Oh, they're blowing up buildings. Oh my god. Uh, anyway, now with this one, these monsters, they, these and these aliens. All right. like big spider like with the monster with the big teeth. You can only kill them if they get shoot them in the belly. And yeah. then they're, ah, they're fucking they eat you. Scary. Scariest aliens. Scariest aliens since aliens. Yeah. Okay. So check out Tomorrow War. I'm not done with it, but so far, it's a fun ride. Buddy, I'm going to see you. And everybody, oh, check out UFC 264 whew. this Saturday night. Watch the prelims. Yes. Dude, the UFC, uh, the UFC app is so fucking good. Yes. Watch the early prelims and definitely get the pay-per-view. What an amazing card. Uh, O'Malley against uh, Chris Moutinho. Uh, Aldana Kunitskaya. Uh, Tai Tuivasa, Greg Hardy. A very underrated fight. Gilbert Burns, Stephen Thompson as the co-main. Poirier McGregor is the main event. Um, Matt, I'm going to see you on Saturday night and, uh, we're going to do the UFC, uh, watch party. And I hope you're there early so we can hang and eat like pigs. Hey dude, if anybody wants to see me on Long Island, I'll be at uh governor's comedy club. No, I'm only kidding. I don't do that shit, but I'll be at Sarah BJJ in yep. Huntington. People come in there. They go, Oh, you, you're really here. I go, yeah, dude, it's my Academy. Look, my name's yeah. on the wall. And then I show them an arm lock. Good. So listen, if you ever want to stop in, Jimmy, and uh, listen, what do you want to plug? What else? Uh, Cameo.com slash Jim Norton. I'm on the website, not the app. And uh, check out the UFC watch party. Jimmy, I, oh, it's going to be so much fun. I'll be seeing you very soon, but not soon enough, my friend. Yes, pal. See you in a couple days. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. See you, Matt.